Hey, what's up guys? Again, Dragon here. And now that Malder totem has been released, now I could be able to do my review as I invest a lot more game time to it. And also finish off with the main quest for, for about three times now. And I'll give you guys my humble opinion on it. So you, there's some stuff you may agree or disagree. If you disagree with certain things, you could write down in the comment section below. So, Malder Toten, or German for Wall of the Dead. It's a new ground based map, which a lot of people really wanted it for so long. Ever since, well, Outbreak kind of got a little bit more attention. Mostly prior to Season 2 and Frank. And a lot of people weren't really happy with Outbreak, which I understand. But I really think the hate towards Outbreak is a little bit unnecessary. But... But, but now... Now they have a new round based mode, or I mean a round based map. Hopefully they will die down. And many other updates with it as well. So of course, Mauer Toten is set place, um, I should leave a little bit of spoiler of containing the story. Okay, so if you don't want me to hear about the story of the main quest, well, I'll put the, uh, the little timestamp on the, well, the video or, and the timer in the, in the description of the video, and then I'll get to race through the gameplay. So, Mauer Toten take place in Berlin. As of course happens when you get captured by the the Omega group after your second main quest in Outbreak in Sanatorium. Unfortunately, Krishenko was there, captured not only you as a strike team, but also your trusted pilot, Raptor 1. And now you're headed to Berlin to deal with their, well, their rap problem being Valentina. Until, you're do, until you do as you're told, and able to kill, or at least capture Valentina for Krishenko to kill her, uh, he will kill Raptor 1. And as for the main quest itself, I really have fun. It's a lot better compared to, well, the Outbreak's main quest for both sides, because it really is terrible, goes to. But as in general, in the entirety of Cold War, it's probably the best one that Treyarch has ever done. And it was very challenging, especially with the boss. And I'll get a few opinions on it as well with the boss fight momentarily. Of course, there are certain things you need to do, usually upgrade Klaus, which is the new you could say the civil protector from Shadows of Evil even works, behaves, and even upgraded like the one. As well, we have a new perk. Of course, we have is Mule Kick, which allows you to carry free guns, and of course, with the each tier upgrades. Of course, the first one is simply anytime you craft an item, you actually get an extra one. So, for example, if you craft a monkey bomb, instead of wasting 2,000 of your salvage for great 2 monkey bombs, all you need is create 1 salvage to get 2 monkey bombs. The fools are no match for the and it's very powerful. Tier 2 will allow you to allow you to actually uh, able to regenerate your ammo. So basically give you ammo regen similar to Bandit Bandit from BO4 as a modifier. So you can see my M14, I have 21, 29 rounds left. If I switch to the other gun and let it wait for a short period of time, and when you hear this noise popping up, Just like that, it's now fully refreshed. Extraction no longer an option. 
for now. Normally, I didn't really like the modifier for Banley or Bandit because it was really there were better perks out there in BO4. But here in Cold War, it really is actually really helpful. But most of the time, I always reload my guns and switch to another weapon. After all, you have to speed cola for that. But it's good if you're like in a pinch or something. Of course, tier two would be, or tier three, is anytime you throw your equipment, you got a 25% chance that you still have it in your holster. For tier 4, you now have. Oh, I think I already explained tier 4. But for tier 5, is of course work like the Mule Kick modifier. Where this time, anytime you go down, you lose your third gun. The ascension begins you can today. enable to buy Mule Kick again, and you get your third gun back. And yes, that's apply when you even pack punch the weapon. Of course, there's a few problems with Mule Kick, which I'll explain in a separate video on the depth about Mule Kick. But other than that, as for the boss fight itself, it was a lot more different. It was at least something fresh, something different, a lot more challenging. And instead of fighting in the this one the same arena, like you do in the previous games, or pre and previous maps, you actually fight the boss in different areas. Kind of similar to the Eye of Odin in Voyage to Despair. And to be honest, I still never went to do the Easter egg on Voyage to Despair, just because it's, it's really tedious as a solo player. And I never attempted once because, well, I'm just not into the main quest of the toughness anymore. But other than that, it's really fun. Very challenging, especially the way you had to deal with Valentina as to destroy your shield first. Use every arsenal that you have at your disposal. Wherever you use Death Machine, Monkey Bomb, Ring of Fire. You're going to need to use everything in your power to take her down. And not only that, she has health regen. So you need to be a type of DPS type of player. Of course, I probably will do an Easter egg guide or a main quest guide for this. But I do have a few issues with the main quest as well. One of the problems is that when you pick up during the uh, quest, when you had to deal with the the Megaton and you kill it to pick up the your little uranium rock, of course, when you pick it up you, with the radiation, you take damage. The problem with it, though, is when you try to craft at a crafting table, you either take damage and you try to fully craft it, but you, you seem to let go even though you didn't. And the hitbox is so weird on it, it really hurts the performance. And honestly, it's just so annoying because you're also on a time limit as well. So I really think they need to improve with the hitbox and, and other stuff across the board. Other than that, everything else seemed to be quite... Everything is solid. Now, as for the entire map itself and the layout... And the size... Well, first of all, the size for it is pretty big. Alright, let's see how this works. Make it to play. A happy accident. And of course we have the underground as well, and of course we have clouds, and you can see there's all these radios and 
of course just a little bit bug unfortunately so I can't even progress which sucks which I need to fix a few things of course you have the underground this the sewer so it's a pretty large to medium sized map or I should say medium to large size here's the mule kick perk itself and of course anytime you buy the perk the guns will start firing and will kill zombies really kind of cool and you also get points for it as well and of course you also have the d department buildings and the stores that you can go through and he did that mangler just really spawn in front of me like that and of course you can actually ride the zip lines definitely one of the more coolest transportation in here we have like teleporters and all that but able to see it yourself is beautiful as for the new type of enemies we have we have we have familiar ones as well as some new faces of course the newest ones we have are the disciples which looks like the grim reaper and we'll mostly summon a lot of zombies with them and either enhance them a little quite a bit but of course these are special enemies and they are a weakness to dead wire similar to the megaton of course we also have the crancy soldat or what i like to call it the panzer soldat which of course which was mostly exclusive to outbreak now appears in this map and then we have of course the manglers which appear a little bit later and begin at the rotation spawn of 25 and then we have the two new other enemies and that are the tormentors which are basically the tempest just with a red color and they're more suicidal like a hellhound and that's about it as for the well, there are other enemies as well, such as the Tempest and the Megaton and the Mix. They do spawn here as well, but they're more in a scripted spawn than a rotation, so you won't see them in your like your normal game. Only when you're doing the main quest or the bunny Easter egg. And speaking about the bunny Easter egg, this one behaves a little more differently this time. Instead of a usual complete for a loot chest that you mostly do, and get like you know a weapon and free jug. They actually do a little bit differently, but by collecting five bunny pieces around the map, then you have to survive in the, well, the bunny's nightclub, playing with the music as a bunny playing, and you have to five free waves into in the nightclub. Once you survive the f clear off the free waves of zombies, you're going to get either a chance of one out of the three of the prize doors. Just like a game show. And the and the prizes themselves are either a medium, a large, or a golden chest for you to take. So it is kinda cool. So sometimes you may get lucky, sometimes you may not. It really depends on the right door you pick. And of course, so far, every perk machine appears in the map, but you do have the Wonder Fizz as well. Also another thing, the bunny does also spawn here once you visit for the first time. So it will spawn at this window. If you shoot it, you will go back to the nightclub again. And of course, Klaus, just like the Soul Protector, does revive teammates, which is pretty nice. And of course, we have the Berlin Wall itself, and of course, the turrets, just like the one we see in BO1. But this time around, you could go actually inside, but be careful when you enter the spotlight because you will get annihilated, or your screen will turn gray, and then you'll be in its camera view. You can also pay trap for the turrets, so just be careful. Now I'm not really sure what the whole purpose of pay for the trap 
turrets because they don't really seem to do much other than turn the spotlight to green. And they don't really do much. So I say these are quite disappointed. Hopefully they get, you know, improved in a later update. But it's nice that we finally have traps in Cold War. Where the previous two maps, Time Machine and Firebase C, you really don't have traps. And of course, another cool feature is you can actually now toggle the lights. Probably one of the best features in the entire... Well, in the entire map. Kinda reminds me a little bit of Killing Floor 2. Except you don't run out of battery. And honestly, this almost feels like a Killing Floor 2 map. Reminds a little bit called Burning Paris. But honestly, this one is a little bit tad better in terms of the gameplay, the core mechanic, and everything else with it. So I do have to say, you do have maps to train around, you do have an area for camping. It's just all there. And it's really nice that they didn't... For most people, we're, we're disappointed that there's not really much, like, a dark tone atmosphere. Unlike, uh, Die Machine and Firebase C. And of course, when you, uh, of course, start the game up, you will hear a classic music, a classic sound back from World of War when you play the campaign in fiction. Since that, since the campaign set in Berlin, it felt really nostalgic and it gave me goosebumps. And honestly, I feel like I'm right at home. So, as much as there's a few kickups and bugs, I do see people get countered by stuck in the zip line. Of course, mostly normally fix it would be your pause the game. Also, another cool thing is that the weapons on the walls in this update, in the survival maps, will have their, well, rarity increase. So before this used to be a tier three, now comes a tier four and then tier five. For every five, it's a chance for every five rounds. So. It's really nice, so if you don't like hitting it for the box, and you do like to get a gun off the wall, but the rarity is just too low, now you can able to get something better out of it. I am nearby if you require evac. Though that would be most Also another cool thing about the well Mallard Tone is the pack a punch. And of course with the new one weapon itself called the Cerberus. Now the Cerberus is has all has basically four different kits. You do have a pistol, you have like an energy laser beam, which I'm having right now. You have a some type of like a shotgun spread and a and a homing seeking pistol. Of course they do have and also have a little bit of an AI to talk through. And of course, the pack and punch camo itself looks really nice. It's at least a lot more different this time around compared to the usual. Well, the uh, the whole orange, green, and a little bit of pink, which is tend to be very, you know. And of course, anytime you kill a zombie with the new wonder weapon, they will drop mud kits on the ground. But you may end up getting, you know, the same ones. So you can get like a nice refill ammo. Death comes for us all. You oh, it is pretty insane. 
think my personal favorite is the only secret one since it does so much damage. I knew you were not finished yet. So overall, Maldra Toten is a great addition and also a nice return to the round based mode. And of course just as smart as DLC free, as Troy Crusader Outbreak, the whole Outbreak experience as DLC 2. Many people may agree or disagree, but I will look back on Outbreak again. As for the Wonder Weapon itself, it's only exclusive to Maldor Toten, but that doesn't mean we'll probably see this in Outbreak anytime soon. But yeah, thank you for watching everyone. Until next time, farewell and have a wonderful day everyone.